Hi, I'm your host, Shami Lochanlal on Gold FM Speak Your Mind, and my guest is the president of Women in Business, Dr. Noor Banu Ali, who doesn't need any introduction. Dr. Ali, welcome on Speak Your Mind today. Thank you, Shami. Thank you for having me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ali, uh, we are going to talk about women in business and, and the awards, but, but first of all, tell me what gave birth to WIB? Hmm. Um, actually, it may be an appropriate comment to make to say I gave birth to WIB. That's how it started uh, many years ago when I, as a young woman, I was uh, fighting for my position in the business world, which is very hostile and very unwelcoming welcoming of women, especially young women, which I was at the time many, many years ago. And then um, I just felt there's so much of hostility towards, you know, and so much of lack of understanding and appreciation of women's work. Mm -hmm. And there was not enough of us in positions to be able to justify our existence, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I talked to a couple of my friends and I said, we should get together and form an organization which supports women's growth mm -hmm. and development into the commerce. And this is how it started. So it, it, it's, it's been a, a long way uh, to, to the progress which you have made at the, at the moment. Did you still have the um, uh, WIB awards back then or is it a new thing? Uh, no, but the WIB Awards started way back in two, 2002 or three, I, I, from you know a bit of lapse of memory mm -hmm. there. So it ran for a couple of years, and then Fiji's uh, unhappy political climate, unfortunately, pushes a lot of things on on the coal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, back burners for a bit, you know, and it just stays still um, kind of took a break. Mm -hmm. And we s rejuvenated the awards program again as of over the last five, six years, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's come back on very strongly. So it started way back and then took a break and then had to be brought back on, you know. Mm -hmm. Tell me time. more about Women in Business Award. What is it? Well, the awards are to recognize wi women's promotion and contribution in the business world you know, and to reward them. And the, as we reward them, we are also inspiring other women to to see and believe in themselves and see that it's possible to be working in a commercial world, which kind of for a lot of people is alien, you know, and it's an alien kind of phenomenon. And how can I be the boss of a business? How can I be mm. the boss of an organization? Mm. You know, because there's not many of us, mm. and it feels and women were never given the opportunities equally to men to be able to participate or get to the top jobs and all that. Mm. So you know, as we recognize these women. We encourage the advancement of women in the business world. So how does it benefit or encourage women, the, the awards as well? The, the awards, by, as I said, by, by you know, rewarding a woman who's achieved and who's been picked out as the business woman of the year, mm -hmm. you, you tell the world or tell Fiji and every, all everybody in Fiji that yes, a woman can be in charge, can be the boss, so please, the other organizations, why don't you encourage your women mm -hmm. in your organizations to get the top jobs because they are really great managers and great leaders and in the, any field regardless. Do you see support from... Uh, uh, from uh from businesses who are pushing the women, uh, encouraging them to be part of this WIB award, are denominating them? Well, yes. I mean, as of uh, it's the initially, there was not as much, but we've seen the support grow over the years as uh, as the film, as the event has gotten to be known mm -hmm. and to be known as a as a positive thing, because there's a whole lot more workforce who are women mm -hmm. and therefore the the organizations feel the need to yes put the put them up and put them to the test and put make challenge them to get to you know be um, a, pro, a candidate to be put to the test so to speak you know and yes it does encourage because of that and it's it's okay to employ women in any job you know that's what the message goes out on and on mm -hmm. and on mm -hmm. and that they are very successful and very smart women out there yeah N normally when 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 you do approach a woman and say you you should be part of this uh, WIB award or we like to nominate the response you get is women are quite shy or whole bit no but you know I, I mean why should I why I mean give it to someone else yeah exactly the attitude yeah. that needs to change that needs to change I mean women that is what they hesitate you know a man in the same position 
will say, yeah, I'll put my name up. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't think twice. Mm -hmm. Even if he can't take all the boxes on the sheet, he'll just put his hand up regardless and be prepared for the test and be prepared to fail, if, mm -hmm. so to speak. And women will not put themselves for the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a lot of cultural in inhibitions as well. Women have been told no and no you can't, no you can't, like you do to a, to a child, you know. Mm. You say no you can't do that, no you can't. The negative messages have so s been set in their minds mm. that they feel like they can't do it. Yeah. And they do it every single day. I mean I always tell the women who I talk to, who I want to ins inspire, and I say look, you are managing right from the time you get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So you are in a management role through and through. You're through. juggling about ten different things all at once. They just need to uh, realize it. Maybe yeah, realize. Uh, yeah. uh, put it uh, down. You know, noted uh, the the points, the yes. management skills which the women have, which they may not have realized. Yeah, absolutely, Shami. I mean, th think of it like this. I said uh, just lately. I said to a male colleague. I said, think you know why women are quite good at management? Think about this. Right from the time you get up. The fact that a woman has to get up and think about the choice of dress she puts on mm -hmm. and everything else that goes with it. I mean, men generally don't have to make those many choices, you know, mm -hmm. about the shoes and the hairstyle and the dress and the lipstick. With, with the guy, it's a shirt and a pants and a jacket, you know, yeah, yeah. and not much uh, to think of. So, so what's your objective with the Women in, in Business uh, uh, Awards? What do you want to see in this area? Are you looking at stats of number of women getting awards, etc.? We want our biggest challenge still remains is putting women in the top jobs. You know, there's a whole lot of management women, a whole lot of middle management women. So, manager of the year is the biggest category, mm -hmm. and there's so many applications that even last year we got challenged to see whether there should be a senior and junior manager. There's that many, yeah. but when you come to the top one, the chief executive officer, the executive of the year. That's where we struggle. We struggle and we struggle. And that's what we want to challenge the organizations out there. You have smart women. Give them the top job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can do it. Have you had yeah. a breakthrough in that area so far? Or are you still struggling with the CEO categories? We, we're still struggling. But it's, the change is happening, but very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. So we need more organizations to believe in the women. And mm -hmm. believe in the women and say, yes, they can do it equally as men. I mean, believe in your people, never mind women, you know? Yeah. Just uh, recognize everyone's talent. Yeah, recognizing and their talent and empowering them and yeah. upskilling them. We'll take a, a break here, uh, Dr. Lee, and then mm -hmm. when we come back, we want to hear some success stories about how many women have been in, awarded and what are they doing now and the categories mm -hmm. uh, you have in the WIB Awards yeah. category. We're going to talk about that soon. This is Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, and I'm your host, Shami Lochanlal. My guest is Dr. Noorba Noor Ali, who is the president of Women in Business Award, and she has done extensive work in this area. So what are the categories, Dr. Ali, in this uh, WIB Awards? Okay. Um, the categories are the same as last year, which is number one is the Businesswoman of the Year. And the Businesswoman of the Year is at least a 50% shareholder of in a business and the managing director. So she's in charge. She's not only an owner, I mean a substantial shareholder, she's also in charge of the operations and the day-to-day -day management and running of the organization, just like the C C CEO does in any organization. Mm -hmm. So that's a businesswoman of the year. But And then with the, we got the executive of the year. The executive of the year is a CEO of an organization, but not necessarily an owner. Mm -hmm. So you could be a CEO of any company who appoints you, you know. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be an owner, but you're still the managing person. And you're the main person, the go-to person, the person responsible for the good, bad, and the ugly of the organization. Mm -hmm. So that's the executive of the year. And then we've got the manager of the year. Manager is a manager in in a head a head of department, head of a division, and upcoming and promising CEO possibly. Mm -hmm. So that's the manager. And then we've got the aspiring entrepreneur. An aspiring entrepreneur is somebody who's got a young business, mm -hmm. and the business may not be more than three years old. 
but they are aspiring to get to a higher position and grow the business to a certain point. Mm. So essentially, these are the four awards. But with the executive and the manager, we've, as of last year, introduced the public sector manager and executive as well. Mm. So we've got the private sector and the public, public sector, sector in those categories. So what's the response like from public sector? Private sector, is it? equally good or yeah uh, well last year we did a lot of rally on the public sector and we did manage to get ve two very successful mm -hmm. candidates mm -hmm. we're happy with that so mm -hmm. this year is a bit slow but we need to pu public sector we really need to go out to them mm -hmm. and find them and then put their names up you know mm -hmm. but even but that goes for women generally even in the private sector women generally won't put their hand up mm -hmm. and we identify them and sometimes we put their names up and then we approach them and say, okay, why don't you put your application in? Because we mm -hmm. think you'll make a good candidate. Mm -hmm. And women generally, the first reaction is, no, you know, mm. no, I, I don't think now. Maybe next year, maybe, uh, but it's not next year or the year. The, the time it's is now. time is now. Yeah. You mentioned that not many women uh, are definitely we know the stats also reveal the fact that not w many women are on CEO positions. Yeah. So when through WIB awards, a woman, a manager is awarded or you have a winner in that area, do you do a follow up as to see how she's performing and, and pushing in the area so that uh, uh, after a few years she may be in that position to see you? Yes, yes, ab ab absolutely. I'm glad you asked me that because that is so true. You know, a couple of years back we had the manager of the year, uh, the TLTB manager, Emma. Emma, after the award, now she's gotten elevated and she's not only a manager of a division, she's the regional manager. So uh, so she is now a regional manager, so okay. she's got a bigger portfolio. Uh -huh. So clearly that award did her something, you know. Mm -hmm. And then last year we had the BSP uh, lady, Atelina, who became the manager of the year. And we have heard from her, I've spoken to her, after the award she's got a bigger Mm. portfolio as well mm. so yes they do get the recognition and suddenly the employers take them a bit more seriously mm. and they these these are the ones who we can inspire to aspire to the top job yeah so uh, all this while you have been the pushing uh, factor and uh, mentor um, a good role model to women, giving women their rightful position in in society and, and in businesses or oh, still to date, what has been the success rate of uh, the awards? How many women are successfully launched in these positions? Yeah, um, we are encouraged. Un unfortunately, I don't have stats to support my statements. But as of what we know, I mean, because we run all these awards, and of course, in, with all these four categories that I talked about, mm -hmm. we've also got employer of choice. Mm -hmm. And HFC was an employer of choice. ANZ was an employer of choice. Mm -hmm. Hot Bread Kitchen was an employer yeah. of choice. So we can see there, there are organizations putting their hand up. And mind you, I'll be happy to report to you today that as soon as we launched the award, the first application we got the next morning was an employer of choice application. Oh, so, you know, it, it's, it, it speaks for itself, you yes, know, definitely. that uh, organizations out there are pre wanting to be the employer of choice yeah. and wanting to be seen to be doing the right thing by women. So mm -hmm. uh, what our women need to do is with the awards, just be encouraged and then put, yeah, just say that you are important. You know, you have to take yourself seriously. Yeah. yeah, We've been talking about the fact that women are important. Women need to take, you know, I mean, seriously think about things. So there's a need to support the recognition of women in leadership roles, yeah. which you are stressing on, you are saying. And over the years, you have been voicing the same, um, the same thing. Why women? Because they are less complicated. <laughs> I'm... You know, to put it very simply, actually, the, there's a myth surrounding women's abilities and leadership. Um, organizations, men generally, be, because they've been running these shows for a long, long time, they seem to think that women are more complicated and they have to be managed in a certain way. They can't handle a the situation. They're too emotional. They're irrational. I mean, all this is a myth. Mm, because a woman's success starts the minute she gets married, not even a, uh, it, the minute she's able to, you know, um, mm. uh, she enters a puberty, becomes a teenager, becomes a married yeah. woman. And then I would say that when a woman gets uh, married, she has already held that now is in a position of a serious role in a family. Exactly. I mean, uh, and you know, it just is, um, they have this ability, it's in their DNA to have a wider vision mm -hmm. and a wider perspective and they can see 10 things. Well, mm -hmm. well, the, 
I mean, it's no kind of offense to the, our male counterparts, but they don't see as many because they don't have to fill as many roles. Yeah, they're able to juggle a lot of yes. things at the same time yes, yes. And, and more productive. So, yeah. so actually, they will make really, really good, um, you know, management candidates. Yeah. So that's why they should be. Mm. And that's why they have to be. And they make so much of the half of the world's population. Mm -hmm. They have to, we have to have them equally represented. Otherwise, you don't hear the other half's view. Mm. I mean, how unfair is that? Yeah. It's pretty dumb, actually. So would you say that in Fiji, women are not equally represented? Uh, no, not at all. They're not equally represented. I mean, look at our boards. You know, I'm, I'm the st chair of the stock exchanges, you know, and we note that there's only eight out of 80 women mm -hmm. who are, you know, directors on pu publicly listed companies. I mean, what's, why is that? I mean, yeah. really, it's, it's really shameful. Yeah. So I when think. we come back after this break, we'd, we'd look at the stat uh, statistics. If you generally speak, then uh, men still have the upper hand and uh, most of the organizations are led by men. Uh, in salaries offered to women on some positions differ. We're going to join this discussion, and we're going to talk about this, so you're most welcome to join us on this discussion after this break. Welcome back on Speak Your Mind. We are uh, into a very interesting discussion about empowering women on leadership roles, uh, them becoming the CEOs. And uh, women and business has been very proactively empowering women in these areas, working with private sector, working with public sector. Uh, identifying uh, women in those areas. I'm sure no, you have been visiting a lot of organizations and doing a lot of work. So a very interesting point here is when we look at uh, statistics, men do have upper hand. That's globally, right? Yes. And Fiji is no exception to that. So most of the uh, organizations which are, le are led by men, yeah. we experience that here in yep. Fiji, and, and men are offered more salary on, on the same position. Um, uh, same positions differ to what a man is paid. How do we overcome this challenge? It is globally, and le but let us look at Fiji holistically. Yeah. Okay, this, as you say, this phenomenon, this uh, uneven platform is across the, across the globe. And what we need to do is the only way it will change is if, if you have women in the top jobs and in the decision make, on the decision-making platform. So the top job being the CEO's job and the, the, and the decision-making platform being a board, for instance. Unless, unless, and I say this one million times over, unless you have women represented on this decision-making platform, women cannot be promoted. Mm. Because it's difficult for a full male cast board to notice a woman's credentials. Mm. It is how it is, mm. you know, and it's just the, because the, of the age-old myth of women not being good enough and they won't be the right candidate for the job, they'll get pregnant, they'll have a baby, they'll take time off, all these considerations become, uh, they come from a negative point of view and there's an all-male cast. I was, I was watching news, the, the mm. New Zealand Prime Minister is mm. now expecting. Yeah. yeah, and she's being criticized for it. Mm. And why? She should be celebrated for it, exactly. in fact. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, how wonderful is that? Mm. That she's able to do that and able yes. to have a baby as well. Yes. You know, it's mm. really nice. Mm. Do you also feel that women feel intimidated? Yeah. In certain areas? Absolutely. I mean, imagine, Shami, if uh, there's a, you go into a room. I was just talking to um, one uh, female uh, colleague last a couple of weeks back she went to an interview so the a whole male panel of interviewers mm -hmm. and she already felt so on the back foot because they had this cross-eyed view of her you know and as to whether she'll be able to whether she'll be able to handle it whether she'll be able to go out whether they just don't have the confidence mm -hmm. and you know i think i mean i'm kind of i run the risk of men taking the daggers out on me now but it's okay <laughs> i think the, they like to have another of their kind join the club mm -hmm. because it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. having sexist jokes and comments around mm -hmm. women, you know, mm -hmm. and they'll have to get out of that um, a space and be able to say, you know, be able to uh, not be able to rather say those uh, underhanded, rough, sexist jokes, you mm -hmm. know. They have to be 
be guarded and careful because they'll be called out mm -hmm. if they say something. Mm -hmm. So then, and then brings me to the subject of sexism, which is what we are promoting and preaching. And this year, our awards theme is Time's Up. Mm -hmm. And we are joining the global campaign of Time's Up. Mm -hmm. Time's Up against any form of harassment or unequal treatment of women in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So if you have women represented with the men, then you know the calling out mm -hmm. won't be then w will be very effective. Mm -hmm. But if you have only men, they won't yeah. see that. You, you mentioned about the the theme of WIB yeah. Times mm -hmm. Up. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering how many women will definitely say, "Hey, this is it. Mm -hmm. Times up." Mm -hmm. Uh, the fear of being intimidated, mm. the fear of being victimized. How yes. do we help women in this area? By, by um, showcasing events and calling it out, and by calling out any form of discrimination or harassment immediately as it's done, mm -hmm. you know? And just a while ago, this morning, I was in a situation where the conversation, because there was all men, and it was only me, and the conversation was going that way, and I said, hang on, hang on, guys, come on. And then they said, oh, sh we forget she's here, you know? But that's what happens, you see? Mm -hmm. It's very easy for them to slide, so they will recruit one of their own kind mm -hmm. to support their own kind. Yeah. You know? Do you think so culture also, uh, and, and our traditions, they do also play a role in that, in holding the women back, or the... Uh, yeah, when you say, you know, when you say the fear of being intimate, intimidated and victimized, this is what the women bring to the workplace. They bring all this baggage, the poor ladies. I feel really bad for them sometimes, you know. They bring this baggage of having to justify, mm -hmm. having to justify, having to make allowances, having to think about 10 issues before they put their hand up for a hard job, you know, mm -hmm. an out-of-town assignment, for instance, or staying overnight somewhere yes. and doing an extra job, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, but they don't have to, and the boys don't think about it twice. Mm -hmm. I think they also need a strong support from their families, their spouse yes, as well, yes. right? And, and the, fair, the <coughs> home environment should be uh, encouraging. Mm. That, okay, no, you go out and do what you have to, you know? Mm. You have a boy child and a girl child. Mm. Both of them should be equally allowed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. explore the different options, explore the different mm. abilities and capabilities and be able to go wherever they have to go yeah. to to achieve that. And I think this good fight will continue for a while, which is good and, yeah. and, and worth fighting. Now, you mentioned that how in a board it's, it's mostly men-dominated. Yeah, yeah. You see very few women. The, the good thing is here with RFBC Fiji Broadcasting Corporation, our CEO is very proactive in those areas. We go and tell him that, hey, we want to be in boards and all that. And he actually uh, channels us through that. And he says, yeah, I want to empower more women. So I think we're being a great mo role model in that area. So, so what are the efforts being made to include the men who hold leadership position and management position, so they will also be able to help to advance women. Are you doing any networking with men in that area too? Well, we we generally, you know, I'm I'm uh, not. I generally, me personally, I don't think it's a great idea to go out to the men and lecture to them because they don't mm -hmm. listen anyway. They don't generally listen. <laughs> but the idea is to have proactive uh, schemes, you know, proactive initiatives such mm -hmm. as when you have the Reserve Bank has set out a kind of an agenda, if you like, a calling for equal representation or calling for 30 of 20 percent, 30 percent, I forget what it is now, mm. by year 2020 of um, number of women on boards, you know. Mm. So those kind of initiatives have to be spoken about and clearly and set out, targets have to be set to achieve and institutions have to mend the HR policies and mm -hmm. change the composition of the HR division to ensure the equal representation. The initiatives like that have mm -hmm. to be taken. Do, taken. You need, uh, do you think that policy needs to be uh, changed on, on a bit uh, higher level, on, on government levels and all that? Um, well, we, we, did, we did think one time that it was, uh, and we did submit to the working committee that maybe it should be legislated for a while, but then I, I, I don't think uh, it'll be managed very well. So mm -hmm. what I think the initiatives through private sector, private sector should be driving this, you know. Mm -hmm. And if we get to a point where we have equal representation in private sector and the government will follow lead, you know. But at the moment, um, there's some government departments, such as the Minister, Ministry for Lands. I know last year when we were doing the public sector, I, went, I mean, drive for applications, we went to the trade ministry and there's a whole heap of women in leadership there, you know, mm -hmm. coming up the ranks, which is so nice to see. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and there are some permanent secretaries and there's four, I think, of, mm -hmm. at the moment. You know, the Ministry of Economy's uh, um, PS is uh, 
Macareta, you know, and she's a female. So, yeah, the, so showcasing these leadership roles and showing, uh, just encouraging other organizations to do that. Mm. Well, we'll take a break. The mm. conversation is getting very interesting. When we come back, we're going to look at the salaries. We, we still are, would like to talk about, I think there needs to be break <laughs> through in this area. And, and um, I know you have been very vocal in these areas. I'd like to ask some personal, you know, some personal testimonies and some rapid fire round with you on Speak Your Mind soon after this break. Speak Your Mind on Gold FM and we are talking about empowering women, women in business awards. Um, before we go into awards and, and the entries, closing dates, etc., overall view of Fiji, if we look at Fiji, are women making stride towards in business world in Fiji or on top positions? Are they moving advanced? Uh, are, they been, are they advancing in this area? Um, yes, Shami, but very slowly. <laughs> you know, we need to fasten that pace. We need to I think, um, you know, sometimes I feel that we're not showcasing enough, but maybe we're not talking about it enough. But I think I think we are. And I think organizations just, they are picking up. They are picking up. And the global campaigns are helping, I must say. Mm -hmm. The global campaigns always help our cause, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we this year decided, and it was such an important and such a relevant campaign mm -hmm. on Time's Up. Time's Up, and yes. that's, well, so we So we picked it picked up on that and we thought we'll rally behind it yeah. you know so we, when we do talk about times up yes. one thing we discussed in our earlier segment was about uh, men's pay versus women's pay yes so how does WIB view women's pay versus men's pay for the same job done and what are your plans in trying to break have a breakthrough in this area in Fiji especially when you're networking and and working very closely with the CEOs um, and, and, and business houses yeah, we just simply have to, women, we are empowering and encouraging women through our networking sessions, through our get-togethers to say, be able to ask, mm. ask for what their right is. Mm. Mm. Tell your management, tell your people that you are not satisfied with what your pay is mm. and your male counterpart is being paid more. And it's true, it is true here, it is true everywhere in the world mm. that women are being paid less for the same job. Mm. A couple of weeks back you saw the BBC senior reporter was talking about this very thing and she was told that she was still in development That's and that's why she wasn't being paid the same amount, you know? Mm -hmm. And a couple more, a couple of years even earlier than that, when the General Motors uh, lady Mary Barra, when she was offered the same job for three million dollars less, and it was the excuse given was she did not ask for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So times up. Women need to ask for that yeah. too, right? So, what programs do you have to make women realize their value and assets that they may have within them? We, you know, we, we need to, the, the biggest enemy for women is them themselves because they do all these things so easily and they make it look so easy that they don't even value it themselves, you know, mm -hmm. they need to start valuing it. Mm -hmm. And like you, you mentioned earlier, they need to start writing down the many things they do in a day. If a woman were to write her mm -hmm. notes on how many things she achieves in a day, mm -hmm. including the thinking that's going on in her head mm -hmm. as, she does, as she's driving to work. Mm -hmm. As a woman gets, picks up her keys and gets in the car and is driving to work, she's thinking about the end of the day even. She's yes. thinking from the morning till the afternoon. Mm. She plans all the many things she has to deal with, all the, the friends she has to call, the children who are in school, the nanny who has to come and look after, and she plans all this. Mm -hmm. When the man is going off to work, he doesn't think of all these things, mm -hmm. and he has to be reminded. She doesn't have to be reminded. Mm -hmm. she, she does what she has to do, you know? Do you think some women do face challenge uh, when it comes to uh, talking to the CEOs or the senior or the board about their pay there, or do they, or, or those, business houses and, and, and the management people who are in management position, do they need to create that environment where employees feel comfortable discussing all these things? That's right. And this is where, again, if you have a um, HR boss who's a lady necessarily, mm -hmm. you'll feel comfortable. You'll go in there and say, can I have a coffee with you? And I know I'm really not happy. Mm -hmm. But if it's, mm -hmm. it's a man, then you feel a bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, for starters, the HR department has to have mm -hmm. equal, equal representation. I don't say 
men and not women, women not men, both of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've uh, got some very great feedbacks and reviews about uh, women in business networking plans and awareness. Mm. Tell me more about this. The, um, and uh, our events? Yes. I uh, think there was a recently, you, uh, you invited a lot of women to do networking, get yes. to know each other. Yeah, How yeah. often does that happen? Well, that, you know, our networking sessions seem to be the, what we call them, uh, speed networking. Or, or, and, you know, in a, jo in, a jo in a joking manner, we call it speed dating. Mm -hmm. So you quickly... You, you, we teach women skills of networking, how to get to know people, how to feel, break that barrier of get feel, feeling uncomfortable to introduce yourself mm -hmm. and talk, out, talk up your skills, you know, as to what mm -hmm. you have, the credentials you have. Mm -hmm. Women gen generally don't like to talk about what they can do. They just are always they're happy to take a second seat and somebody is saying something and they feel intimidated. They don't want to sell themselves, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we say. They won't sit on, on the table. They sit on the, on the back row, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So I think it's very timely for women to, uh, to speak up and not yeah. hold back, which you have been stressing all this yeah. while. When do entries close? Oh, the awards. Entries close on the 4th of April, soon after Easter break. Mm -hmm. And that's when they close. So we don't have too much time, ladies. We've got two months mm -hmm. and uh, you know, not even two months now, actually. Mm -hmm. A month and a week, yeah. February so, is gone. So. Yeah, mm. and we are promoting the, we're doing application drives, I mean, through your program. Thank you so much for allowing us to do this. Mm -hmm. So we can I'll let the women out there, please put your applications in. you still got time. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, the form is less complicated than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So just some basic credentials. And then when we get to the interview level, then we will ask for further information. How, how do we um, access to the uh, the forms, uh, registration forms, entry forms? At the WIB office, WIB email address and uh, all Westpac outlets, all of our early specific offices, both here in Nandi. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all out there. Okay. And please do. I just encourage all the women out there to please put your applications, your friend's application, your application, anyone you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Start networking. And if there are any and male sponsors there, you know, of women yeah. who need to be nominated, please don't hesitate because women are productive and I'm sure that they will add a lot to your businesses. Another break and then we'll be uh, into our last segment. Mm -hmm. Welcome back on Speak Your Mind. My guest is Dr. Noor Bano Ali, who is the president of Women in Business, and she has done a lot of work in this area. And I'm sure you are um, having a great breakthrough um, as you go along, and I know you face challenges. So now tell me, how did you get to where you are today, Noor? And <laughs> who, what helped you along the way? Gosh. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, a whole lot of things, um, Shami. Firstly, I was challenged and I was, um, you know, at the time when I started out of university in the first jobs mm -hmm. and there was hardly any women and we were like given the menial jobs, you know, the small jobs to do. So I, I remember working only for two years with other organizations before I started on my own and I thought how, you know, I mean, I had a lot of self-belief, uh, which is, which was, I guess, a good thing. Maybe it was through my the influence of my family, my my father, my parents were di mm -hmm. we were different. We were kind of we allowed to do a thing uh, yes. for ourselves and do our thing. Uh, I think that, we that does play an important role yes. because when you see families and, and, and the way parents groom the children, sometimes yeah. for girls they said, oh, uh, oh, no, no, you're not supposed to say that or, yeah. or you're not supposed to debate because yeah. you're a woman, you're a uh, girl. Yeah. Yes. No, no, we had our equal, equal share of, of um, like my brothers were allowed to do a lot of stuff which I wasn't, but at the same time we had this unspoken rule of, yes, I could think, I could you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't spoken about that much, but it was, it was encouraged. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and then I went off to boarding school, and in boarding high school, mm -hmm. I have a, had a very very strong principal, mm -hmm. and people often ask me who you're afraid of, and I say her, <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> because she is, she was, she said she used to work long hours mm -hmm. and hardworking lady, discipline total disciplinarian, you know. So maybe all these influences, you know. Yes, yes. My grandmother, my grandmother was a business lady mm. and tough woman. Mm. So, and my mother also. So I guess it's those strong influences. Mm. In and good lives, role models. You know? So yeah. in what ways do you think that gender has affected your career path? Oh, big time. Big, big time. Everything I am is because I'm a woman. 
is is because I took it and I wanted to make a point of mm -hmm. saying yes I can mm -hmm. because I'm a woman I can mm -hmm. and because I'm a woman I will mm -hmm. and that motivated me the more I was told I can't do, do it the more sexual comments were made at me remarks were made at me and sexist comments were thrown at me the more I got stronger you know mm -hmm. each time when I say to the ladies each time you feel like crying do cry mm -hmm. because we are lucky we can yes. because and each time you cry you get stronger mm -hmm. and you become so strong and st uh, strong as nails and then you don't nothing everything bounces off you then. yeah so so not to be taken back by the fact that you meet challenges sex yeah commands and, and don't feel dismayed about it no. but, but you know exactly uh, stand up yeah yeah and, and courageous you will, uh, absolutely and you will find I'm sure I mean not only me there's many other women who tell their story mm -hmm. the more hurdles are being thrown their way mm. the more stronger they become yeah they do so what have been some of your motivating factors from the start of your career until now which could be a motivating factor to women who are watching and listening um, but you know you can do it to, mm. to start with mm. most of you women if you think about it just sit down and make a, take a tally of what you can do mm -hmm. and you will realize and that you can and whatever it is mm -hmm. you you are dreaming of doing you're thinking of doing get up and just do it mm -hmm. the, in it may your attitude is what will take you all the way mm -hmm. if you are strong enough and nobody can come in your way mm -hmm. that's how I always think I mm -hmm. always think you know and you must just say, and each time somebody says you can't do it, just prove it wrong to them. Yeah. I, and don't go fighting back. Just simply do your job mm. and do it so well that it's just, you know, yeah. another it thing that, for itself. Another thing that we women need to, uh, mm. yeah, it's like a woman's forum, definitely. Uh, mm. and, and two, I think, strong women discussing mm. a lot of things with other women and men is the self-pity attitude. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You're not a victim. Mm. Don't play victim. Don't go and cry in a corner. You know, say, no, I can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 I goofed up. Okay, sorry. You know, the girls in my office, some of them are very strong young women, you know, who come up and they come to me and they say, mm -hmm. I say, look, don't cry. Mm -hmm. Just go and fix it. Mm -hmm. I, but I encourage them, if you made a mistake, come and tell me you made a mistake. Yeah. But if you made a mistake, don't stand there and say you made a mistake. Go and fix it, for fix it, God's yeah. sake, you know. Mm -hmm. But And that's how you become better. Then. Yeah. And I think WIB Women in Business is such an excellent platform to women uh, to prove all these uh, yeah. uh, things. That's an opportunity that uh, you are giving to a lot of uh, women here. Yeah, absolutely. So in closing remarks, what is one thing that you'd like to tell the women? We, we like to tell them that WIB is working for your benefit. And what we are doing is our main... The number one and the number two and the number three goal is simply to promote and advance women's position in the commercial world. Mm -hmm. We want more women in leadership positions in the commercial world. We want more women mm -hmm. on, uh, on the decision-making platform, on boards and committees and subcommittees, whatever level of decision-making there may be. Mm -hmm. So please do your bit and put your hand up and talk to us and tell us that you want to be. So tell me another thing. I mean, you're very vocal and you've always stood up for women. When mm. you do network with men, male-dominated society, whatever, even with, in cocktail parties, I think mm. you see mm. more. How do men look at you when they see Dr. Noor Bano <laughs> Ali is there? She's coming. I know you're mm. a great, great person who sponsors other women too. Yeah. Well, what is their take on you? Oh, well, them, when they, you see, a lot of, uh, I have a lot of male friends as well. And I, I say to them, and they see with me, they won't talk that way. So you know what the, it tells me? It tells me simply is because I don't take nonsense mm -hmm. and because I speak it out and I call it out all the time. We all have to do that. We, have to do that. we all have to do that. And no one is going to mm -hmm. can pull you down. Not one person in this world can pull you down unless you choose to. Yeah. You know? You have to. So, I, uh, yeah. Mm. You have to. You have to come out of comfort. I used to be a, an, an introvert before. Mm. But as he is and all that, when I was determined, I said, no, I need to change. Yeah. So you don't have to stay where you are. No, absolutely. Mm. I tell, as I say, I tell the young girls in my office, I look, I wasn't always the way I am. Yeah. yeah. But it took over the years and I see the amount of uh, negative that's thrown at you. I say, no, no, you need to fight this. Yeah, and soon enough, a challenge, yes. soon enough, it becomes second nature. And you go in and they say, oh, it's you, and they're comfortable. The men are even comfortable talking about all kinds of issues in front of me now, you know, mm -hmm. and, but they do, they are on the guard if they make any sexist Definitely. comments. Definitely, and I think they need to. And, 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 and the theme around WIB this year is 
Time's up. So time's up, ladies. You need to move forward and fill in the entry forms with WIB Awards, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Dr. Noor Banu Ali, for sharing such good, important things, and I'm sure a lot of women must have been encouraged through this program. Thank you once again. I hope so. Thank you, Shamika. Yeah. And you I'll see much. you again on Speak Your Mind next week.